This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the PWR gym here in Essex. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Ryan Crawford. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, Coogan. Yeah, good. Okay. How are you? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Now, Ryan, you've not fought in four no, years. Four years. So, yeah, right. just from a fighting aspect, are yeah. you currently still retired or not? Well, I was retired. I've been out in Ibiza, living out in Spain for the last three years. And, um, you know... Since all this COVID thing has happened, you know, I thought, you know, there's still a little bit in the basement, still a bit of fighting spirit in there. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it another go. When I'm seeing guys like Joe Fournier on the scene and, you know, all these Muppet YouTubers, you know, I, I just want to get out there, it's got me itching. So I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for these guys, you know, I'll fight them for free, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So let's, I mean, obviously, we, your last fight out against uh, Isaac Chamberlain back in. 2017 or 18 was it 17 17, it was, yeah. 17. so time's, time's you didn't you had what five or six fights before uh, that was your fifth or sixth fight up yeah. until then so kind of before that covid period what was the reason why you didn't kind of continue straight after that defeat you know to isaac i was never really living the life to be honest with you so let me start this from the beginning so eddie hearn gave me an opportunity to fight on the klitschko um joshua card Right, so I was matched with a Coley. I was in the shape of my life, right, and they pulled the fight about a week before because they heard that I was sparring. I was in this form of my life. Eddie said it was too much of a risk for a Coley to face me that, that time. Then, right, so you got to imagine, right, for me, who's you know, I've come from the um, you know white collar boxing. I only had a handful of amateur fights to be told that I'm fighting on the biggest fight of the century, yeah, and then it gets pulled. You know, I got got a little bit down about it, so. I ended up, you know, not training. I went out to Brazil, went a bit party, you know, because I've liked my party lifestyle a little bit. Went a bit too mad. Then, obviously, I'm out in Brazil. Uh, my manager at the time, Steve Goodwin's called me. He's gone, right, um, can you be ready in two weeks? We've got a fight with Isaac Chamberlain. You know, at the time, I thought, do you know what? I'm, I'm just going to do it. But I got in there, and I'll tell you what, you know, I've come back, done two weeks training. I was a little bit overweight. I don't know if I remember. If, I think he was at the weigh-in. I was, I was, you know, almost an heavyweight. And um, I come back, and to be fair, mate, in the first round, I won that first round against Isaac Chamberlain, and I've been out in Brazil, you know, partying me, you know, partying. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I didn't do too bad. He caught me with a body shot, and to be fair, I got up, I'm sure I got up on eight, but he counted me out. I, I was when they were looking at me at my corner, he was going, look, take your time, take your time, and I got up too late, you know, got up. Got up on nine, but I could have given Isaac a good, 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 better fight than what I thought I'd give myself on a night. I'm better than that for sure. Okay, well, look, that, that's in the past now, so yeah, that yeah. was four years ago. Um, something has obviously reignited the fire, shall we say, for you to, to want to come back. But I do obviously want to pick up on some of the comments that you just mentioned there about you, you mentioned Joe Fournier there, who was in action on the Triller show in America last weekend. and the YouTubers, I'll let you use the, the phrase that you used before that, but um, what you sound like you're aggravated by these, it is, it this situation. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of fighters out there that give their heart and soul into the sport, and then there's these few donuts that come along. Disrespect, I think it's a disrespect, they're disrespecting our sport, yeah? I mean, I'd fight both of them guys on the same night, and I'd do it for free, yeah? So I'd put that offer out there. I tell you, I'll put another offer on, on the table because Joe Fournier he says he's a businessman. Yeah, I put 100k of my own money on the table. Yeah, winner takes all. Yeah, we we'll see we'll see what he says about that. Yeah, see if he comes back with that because now he started ignoring me. Yeah, I see him on his silly, silly muggy little interviews. All of a sudden, he's developed a, an American accent. All of a sudden, yeah, the geezer's a clown, mate. I'm gonna, I'll, you know, come and fight me, Joe. Yeah, this is a message to you. Come and fight me, mate. Come and fight a proper fighter. Yeah, none of these. Rappers, you know, YouTubers, and all that shenanigan. You say you're an undefeated pro boxer, yeah? Well, come in, come and fight a proper fighter, mate, yeah? Let's see what you're about. And then I'll tell you what, if you do beat me, I'll, I'll shake your hand and, and fair play to him. I wish him all the best. All right, so do you, if you, do you know Joe Fournier personally? Have you met Joe oh, Fournier before? His nightclub, yeah. Yeah, a bit like many years ago, that Bombardier. I've, I've been there. Um, I mean, it was only a tiny little gaff anyway I mean it weren't like the spot they go to but he's living a fake dream the geezer isn't he you know what I mean so listen let him have his little limelight you know but I'll, I'd like to bring him back down to earth back to reality well the last I 
saw from the kind of the aftermath of last weekend, which Joe Fournier fought. Joe Fournier was targeting a fight with with Jake Paul, who was obviously headlining that card against Ben Askren. Um, so that was the the route he was looking to go down. Now is to 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 call out a fight with with Jake Paul. So. But I'm sure at some point Joe will see this and uh, we'll see if we can get a response from Joe about it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, nice one. All right, appreciate that, Coos. It was nice to do this interview because I know we've been doing it, you know, we've been meaning to get this interview for uh, many years. Obviously, I'll see you down at your call, but you know, it's good to finally meet you and, and do the interview. I think the first thing you said to me out there was, Are you Joe, Joe Fournier's promoter? Yeah. Which I said, No, Joe Fournier is a very good friend of mine. And obviously, we, we do a lot of interviews with Joe, but listen, if you've, you've had your say on the matter, and I'm sure Joe will want to kind of. If he wants to respond, he's obviously more than welcome to, to respond, and then we'll see where it goes. Well, I think just a lot of people, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think this goes for a lot of people. They're all quick to jump on the bandwagon and people that have got the money, you know, but I think we still need to support the grassroots boxing, you know, the small hall shows, do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, what's going to happen to all the, you know, the amateurs? There's a lot of talent out there that they, they get forgotten about. What, because they haven't got a big following on YouTube, do you know what I mean? It's not good. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like these clowns disrespecting the sport. Because I tell you what, I could put Joe Fournier in with a couple of the amateur boys down at a club near, local to me. And I, I think it'd, it'd get pasted, mate. It'd get knocked out. I mean, w- w- one thing I will weigh, because I have this discussion with people all the time, and I see people's comments regarding kind of people like Jake Paul, etc. And before that, his brother Logan Paul with KSI and that kind of thing. But yeah. ultimately, boxing is a business as... Yeah. as whatever that is we know we all love boxing and it's the reason why I'm talking to you about boxing now but boxing is a business and it is about money and it is about generating numbers and people like Jake Paul who says that that fight with Ben Askren did 1.3 million pay-per-view buys the other day you could see why people getting involved in that would want to be involved in that but I've got a few quid yeah but that don't mean I can go and have a kick about with Harry Kane next week does it do you know what I mean what like do you know what I mean? It, it's like it's disrespecting our sport. It's, and I think like you know the, the governing bodies etc. They need to. I think they need to step in and regulate it a bit better because you know they're disrespecting the sport, mate. And I'm here to 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 pay pay dividends, mate. You know what I mean? I'm here to bring the fist. All right. Well, listen, uh, Ryan. Thank you very Sorry, much. He's off you. He's, ask him if he looks like an extra from Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Ricky McFarlane. You can't really see him. He doesn't really like the camera. No, cameras on, no. on him. But you can hear his voice yeah. if you want. Do you want to say anything, Rick, while you're here? I'd like to ask you one question. <laughs> Have you at one stage been in Sons of Anarchy? Uh, it was once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks, mate. Last one. Thanks a lot.